Hi, this is QA Shahin, and in this video, we will talk about properties files. This is the 11th WebDriver Video.js series, and we will look at introducing this concept of properties in your test to help with scaling and to help with configuration of your tests. So what is the agenda of this video? Well, firstly, we'll be looking at the concept of scaling a test and how this relates to properties. We'll be looking at how to add in parameters to your test through configuration. And as always, if you'd like to quickly copy paste the code in or just follow this in the blog post itself, then you can access that here through this link here. This can also be found in the description of this video. So what is this idea of configuration? What is this idea of scaling? Well, let's assume for a moment that you have written a single test and it is running against a URL. Doesn't matter what that URL is for the moment, it's just running somewhere and it's hitting a URL somewhere. Let's assume that the website doesn't change but the URL pointing to that website does and you only have one test then it's not really any much of a headache. You just go to your test and you update that URL in that one place. In an ideal world, there's a good chance you won't have a single test or a single script. You may have many, you may have 10, you may have 100, you may have 1000. And let's assume that you didn't parameterize that URL. What you will be forced to do is to go and change that URL in every single test individually. and that change itself is very simple it is by no means complex but it is incredibly time consuming because you'd have to do it manually in each file you'd also because you're doing it manually you would also possibly end up writing in the url and actually making errors so you may end up running all your tests only to find out you've missed a few only to find out you've misspelled it in a few places even worse, if you don't run it manually and you run it in CI, it might take even longer simply because in CI, in a normal CI environment, there are usually other builds and other jobs running. So it takes even longer to find out. So with all of that said, it is in your interest to start thinking about parameterizing commonalities between different or same tests. So with that said in mind, what will it look like? Well. We will first look at a very simple script. All it does is it navigates to the test room. If you haven't seen what the test room is, it's just my blog site. And we will navigate to that site. And then we'll take that same script and we will run it, but with a properties file, which will handle and manage that URL. And we will see the advantages you get as a result of adding in a properties file. So let's begin. The first thing I'm going to do is just navigate to the directory where I'm holding all of my WebDriver.js files and I'm going to really quickly create a script. So to do this I'm just going to use the touch command and I'm going to say script.js. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is quickly write up a script that actually navigates to the site. So I'm just going to say var WebDriver which is going to be equal to require and I'm going to say I need Selenium web driver and I'm just going to create a driver variable and I want to say it's equal to web driver dot builder uh, with capabilities and I'm going to pass it in a Chrome instance and I'm just going to say driver dot get the test room URL So let's try and run this and hopefully this should be error free. So I'm just going to use node to run this.
and as you can see it navigated the test room and it closed the site great so let's just quickly summarize this we've been through this before but it shouldn't take too long we are getting the selenium driver and we're instantiating it as a web driver which we then use to build the driver object and we run it in a chrome browser and we're navigating to the test room so if we quickly refer back to our diagram where we don't run with any properties file this is simply that option here this is simply that solution we're just running the script as it is in a standalone form and we're not considering the fact that this may one day change so if we end up writing this say in various different scripts if this URL changes to say something like test room new then this three lines will not work anymore because they will be navigating to a site that potentially doesn't exist anymore so I'd have to write it in each one of these manually individually but like I said this could be subject to stuff like typos stuff like me actually missing it out and it just creates a world of headache what we can do instead is introduce this concept of parameterizing it i.e removing this url from the script altogether and putting it somewhere else so let's see how we can do that so to do that what i'm going to do firstly is create another script called properties so i'm just going to say touch properties.js and this would have now created in the same directory another file called properties.js as we can see here so let's open that okay so what do I want to do in this so one of the beauties about node is that we can start to introduce what's called an export and we can export the contents of this file to any script we want to be able to export a file out and this is something we've also discussed in previous videos where we create a class and export it we can use the same notion here but to instead export it as a class we just export it as a payload of data from this file and to do this we can say module dot exports equal to and then anything we want so now what is happening here is that we are simply saying we want to export anything in this content here so now we can start to add in some data so in this case because good practice around exporting out say member variables which are simply key value pairs of data they should be in an uppercase format and the way we can do that is to simply give it a name so my url is called the testroom.com so we could say something like the test room dot com but as you can see this is sort of very long-winded and it's also a lot more difficult to to write out every single time we can abbreviate it as well so we could just say something like the test room and that should be good enough and then we can say this is equal to a value and the way we do it is we put a colon and then we actually give it a value so in this case i'm going to say http colon process forward slash www dot the test room dot com and close this string off now when we try to say access this particular variable here this is the value that we're going to get and to access this we simply have already made this properties file exportable so this is actually the makeup of exporting in a file there is nothing else that you need to do in this file particularly all you now have to do is somehow pull this into any script you want which then gives you access to all the particular variables so let's go back to our script and now in our script what we're going to do is we're going to pull in that file and how do we pull in that file well it is actually identical to this we just require the file into the script so I'm going to say something like var properties and this is going to require and then I just simply provide the path to that properties file which is in the same directory 
So I'm just going to use the dot operator to say in the same directory, followed by forward slash. And I'm just going to say properties. This value here now contains all the payload of data from this properties file, which is basically this file here. So now if I remove this, instead of saying this, I can now say properties.ttl because this now contains the information which is being pulled from here. It's actually TTR. Right, so now that we've saved the file, let's run this file and see if it actually works. And as you can see, it actually worked. So what did we do in this video? So in this video, we firstly looked at a script which wasn't parameterizing anything. It was simply fully isolated and it wasn't taking into account any sort of feature proofing where we assume that things may change. And it worked for all intents and purposes, but the problem of doing that or a disadvantage to doing that where you have a file in full isolation is that if something changes and there is a commonality between multiple test files, you would have to go and make that single change in multiple files. And that is subject to human behavior, i.e. you could misspell something, you could miss something, and it just creates a headache. We then took that same script and we added in a configuration. And what that meant for us is that if that parameterized factor changes, we actually change it in one place. And that change is automatically inherited amongst all the files which consume it. In other words, we don't even need to know what files use that variable because we don't care. The only thing we care about is changing the value of that variable. And it's a lot easier because we do it in one place. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.